Today, I'm with Roshan Daryanani, and we're going to talk about how we can shift our perspective so that we can always maintain optimism and proactivity in our, in our life, in our work. Um, Roshan, it's great to have you here. Yeah, it's lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So let me first um, kind of share your background with people, and then we'll get into this topic of um, you know, personal leadership. So um, first, I, I want to just say the way that uh, Roshan and I met was interesting. And it's an example of collaboration. I always talk about collaboration. Um, so Roshan had, uh, had found me on some podcast interview that I did. Uh, we, we can't remember exactly who it was, but she heard me on a podcast somewhere. And then uh, maybe she followed my blog or something afterwards. And then eventually um, she, sent, she mailed me a physical letter of thanks. And I rarely get physical letters. I mean, literally like two or three in a year. So I, get, you know, I get emails all the time, but physical letters is really rare. So obviously that kind of stood out for me. And I, I reached out to her and thanked her for that. And then, uh, you know, we exchanged emails every now and then. And um, here we are, you know, on an interview. So um, Roshan, let me just share uh, that you are a tutor and a writer. Uh, she, by the way, Roshan just wrote a wonderful little book um, called The Answers Are Everywhere. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. The answer, and it's one of the most creative books I've bought in a long time. It is. It is. You should. You all should check it out. We'll. We'll give you a link in the notes of the video. So uh, she's a tutor and writer. She trained as a teacher, and she tutors children of all ages in maths and biology. Uh, here in the uh, United States, we call it math, and over there, you call it, call it maths. <laughs> With yes. the um, And do you tutor people um, uh, online as well, or just in person? I have tutored online as well, but mostly it's in person. Okay, but so you can accept students. Oh, I do, online. yeah, I have done it, yeah, cool. yeah, cool. yeah. Um, so I'm just continuing with your bio here. Uh, Roshan enjoys writing about self-improvement and connecting with other people in an increasingly disconnected world. Her other creative pursuits, which include cra uh, graphic design and filmmaking, also feed into her writing, which is why her book is so creative uh, looking. Mm -hmm. Roshan recently published a book called The Answers Are Everywhere. It's a collection of resources that answer some of life's big questions, such as how to befriend your feelings and how to keep learning. So thanks so much for being here, Roshan. And um, you, uh, I want to just start with how you, you say there's, there are five words that can change our level of contentment. So let's start with that. What are those five words? Yeah, so the five words are, there is another way. Um, and basically, there, the, the there way is always remember. another way. That's right. Sorry, there's always another way. But <laughs> as a math tutor, I forgot to count. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I can tell you a bit about how I developed that idea. Yeah, that's great. Sure. So um, I have, over the last few years, been reading a lot of self-development books, as no doubt all of those who follow you have been doing as well. And I kept coming across this idea again and again, which is that it's your perspective on situations that matters. Um, and not the situations themselves. And uh, no doubt, um, you know, we've all heard this, but I realized that I wanted some concrete steps to actually apply that to difficult situations. So your work, for example, George, has really helped me realize that there's a different way to be a freelancer, an entrepreneur, uh, a way that's more heart-centered heart and, um, and at the same time smart but that doesn't involve sort of constantly thinking about scale and hustling and all of this. So I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Um, so thinking about this, these sort of concrete steps that would help me to, to view situations differently and to, um, that can help us all to, to shift our perspective on really difficult things. Um, I came up with these four steps and helpfully, uh, the first letters of the steps uh, spell out the word lead which I think is, is very relevant because that's what leaders do. They have a unique vision on situations and they're just able to see things uh, in a different, more constructive light than the rest of us do. Um, so that's how I remind myself to keep doing this when I'm in that challenging situation. Yeah, and so, I just, before you go on, I wanna mention yeah, that you had written a series of little public journal entries um, some time ago I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. I think it was a series where you were like challenging yourself every day to do something scary. Is that right? That's correct. To do something uncomfortable every day for a hundred days. That's yeah, right. that was amazing. Cause I, I didn't catch all of it, but I did catch some parts of it. And I was, um, 
I was just really uh, inspired uh, by that, that you chose to do something uncomfortable. What were, what were a few of the, do you remember what a few of those things were? Yeah, they were all little things as well. Um, so it wasn't like huge, huge things. One of the ones that was really difficult for me was to just do a survey, like survey strangers in front of a mall. That one was quite hard. Um, but I realized that, you know, the things we think are really hard, we can actually do them. Yeah. Um, another one was going to um, a sort of morning rave. I had never done that before. Um, it was a sober rave, but it was, it was interesting and it was something I'd never done before. So that was interesting. Yeah. And I, of course, I remember one more, one more was where you were like taking a cold shower. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a great one. Yeah. It actually inspired me to start looking into them. Like, and then, and then I have occasionally been taking cold showers. So yeah. There's, there's a lot of science saying that they're yeah. really helpful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, I just wanted to mention that because I feel, I feel like you are, um, you are really, you're, you're continually challenging yourself and, kind of this is where the framework uh, has come out of it. So LEAD, L-E-A-D, let's go ahead and share that with folks. Sure, yeah. So uh, in LEAD, the L stands for link. Uh, link up with people that you know and people that you kind of know as well. So I think there's this myth in self-development that we have to do everything by ourselves and you know it's important to be independent. And that's not helpful to us in the sense that it makes us feel we have to, uh, we, we shouldn't be asking people for help. Uh, and I think that limits people a lot. I think actually leaders ask people for help all the time and kind of figure out who's the best person for the job. And so think about, you know, in your own community, in your network, maybe when it comes to friends of your friends, who could help you with a situation? Who has more experience in it? Uh, and reach out to them, you know, get into the habit of speaking to them and, and asking them questions. That's actually the trait of a, of a great and humble leader, I think. So that's the L. Um, the and e actually, you know, with, with each of these, you had a, you had an example you wanted to share. Um, Absolutely. Should yeah. I go through the example? Sure, sure. sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, for me, um, the way that I have applied these steps is when it comes is in the realm of sort of work and money. Over the last few years, I've noticed that I'm getting into a scarcity mindset around these two things, and I really wanted to shift that. So when it comes to linking up with other people. Sometimes the person you link up with is the author of a book or some, you know, just someone who helps you see things in a different light. So um, I came across this article that's called, Thankfully, Life is Full of Problems. Um, and it's on a great illustrated blog called More to That, which has lovely little articles on, on various different topics. Um, and that article helped me see that actually I don't have to think about money and work as this heavy burden. I can start to see it as... Um, something in my life that I can learn through and I can I can actually start to enjoy the process of learning to manage my money um, and George your work on joyful productivity ties in really nicely with this as well so you can learn to enjoy the process a process that you previously thought would be sort of really difficult um, so in terms of the actual person I linked up with after reading this article um, my dad uh, help me to get in touch with one of his friends who taught me all about investing in index funds. Now, this is something I previously had very little knowledge uh, knowledge on. And so learning about these index funds helped me realize, well, what we're taught about money in school is it's really limited. Um, and there's so many ways to go about it. Um, and I also realized that people really want to help in general. So it's actually like, really kind of you to give them the opportunity to help so that's a different way of looking at it as well yeah um, I, and i'm glad you mentioned index funds because i'm a big fan of it that's where most of my money is um and then there's of course these days well vanguard is, is the most popular one but these days there's these robo advisors like i use wealth simple that's one that's my probably my favorite one which yeah. allows you to easily invest in um, index funds that are filtered for social responsibility like mm. it's just a matter of a few clicks and it's like so easy. And mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm glad you mentioned it. I just want to give that a plug, yeah. Yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, that's the link part of it. Mm -hmm. um, the second part is to externalize. Um, and what this refers to is try to detach yourself slightly from the problem and think if someone specific who you really care about came to you with this problem, what would you advise them? Um, and it sounds really simple, it's kind of hard to do. So what I try to do is, I try to notice 
what's the advice that I keep giving people in my everyday life uh, when they're asking me about their own issues? Um, so, I mean, this, for my example, is, is true for money and for many other things. I found that the advice I was giving people was, you know, be kind to yourself and celebrate the small wins. And I think celebrate the small wins is a huge one. And so I had to turn this on myself and think, well, what little steps have I already taken towards managing money? Uh, you know, in what ways have I stopped comparing myself to others? Because that's a huge one for me. And am I celebrating my own sort of unique journey through this? So that's externalized, sort of try and look at the problem from a different perspective. Think about what advice you're giving to people. Because more often than not, that's the advice we ourselves need to follow. Uh, the advice that we're giving other people. Um, and then the next step is to act. Um, take a little tiny action that moves you in the direction that you want to go. For me, it's all sorts of small things. Um, I really enjoy listening to instrumental music while I write or create, and that helps me. Uh, there's an app called Focus at Will. I don't know if you've heard of this, George. Uh, I have not, but I will check it out. What, what sure, it it's really great. So it just plays instrumental music it has all these different channels that you can choose from but it's very sort of it minimizes the distraction and that you don't have to keep choosing a song or anything it just plays music for you Great. um in the background i find it really helpful and it's sort of music that i think has been proven to help you focus hmm. made a difference to me we'll be checking it out um, yeah very soon yeah for sure and the other thing that i do i mean sometimes the things that help move you forward are sort of unexpected and can be really simple as i said so in order to motivate myself to write an article, what I do is I actually look for a photograph or design um, a graphic beforehand, because I find that that part really relaxes me and I really enjoy it. So if I have the graphic or the photograph all ready to go, then I have more reason and sort of more of a source of motivation to just get on with the article because the graphic is done. Um, so that's act, you know, find a tiny little step, whether it's five minutes of work or whatever you can do to just move yourself forward. Um, and the last step is decide. I think that's the most important one for me. So as no doubt we all know, there are many situations in life that are where it's quite difficult to shift your perspective because you've been thinking about uh, something in, a, in the same way for many years. This is where coaches are helpful or you know, people who can look at the situation objectively. But I think it really comes down to you deciding, to you saying, well, this is hard, but I'm going to commit to it for however long I need to uh, and keep reminding myself of why I want to manage the situation differently or view it differently and just sort of keep coming back to it because mistakes and you know you're falling back into your old tendencies that's all going to be part of the process but if you decide and you commit to it then you can keep sort of moving in the direction that you you want it to go in so I think deciding is a huge part of of the process. Mm. That's great. So link, mm -hmm. externalize, yes. act, uh -huh. decide. And That's I will have the write-up. Uh, Roshan was kind enough to write this up, and uh, I'll put it in the notes of the video as well. So, um, so this is like a framework that you use to, you know, when you encounter a life challenge. Um, so maybe you could share with us how, how this might be applied in, a, in another setting. Let's say... Let's say somebody was, well, dealing with marketing their business and they were having a hard time figuring out what to do. So let's, let's just play a game and apply this lead idea to, to do that. So, so link um, would be to, well, where can you go for advice, right? For support, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And externalize would be... Uh, if, if a friend came to you to say, well, I'm confused about marketing, what might you say to them? Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, just a couple of things I would add to that, absolutely. Um, with the link, I would say, try to think outside the box a little and go to people who you wouldn't normally think of as marketing experts. Say, for hmm. example, marketing is a great one that you brought up because, great example that you brought up because everyone to some extent uses marketing in their job. So, teachers have to sort of market um, their lessons to their students. Uh, so I, just as an example, I would say if you're thinking about marketing your work and you're a little bit tired of 
the marketing advice that you're seeing. Maybe go to a teacher or a salesperson or, or someone who has a slightly different job and think about how do they, uh, how do they address their target audience, uh, for example. Yeah. With the externalized, that's kind of a hard one, but I do keep coming back to um, what's the advice that you're giving other people or what, I guess with the marketing example, it would be in what ways have you been successful? So maybe when have you been able to persuade someone to change their mind or to think differently? What tactics did you apply in a situation where you were successful instead yeah. of selling someone something? Yeah, and also I would say sometimes we, we're we more effective giving other people advice and we yeah. forget to, to like, we'll say, how can that advice apply to my business? That's right. And so, no, I think it's really right. Like, like um, you know, when you go to a Facebook group, for example, um, that's related to business and you see other people posting questions to you, it's like, oh, I have an idea about that. I have an opinion. And then yes. you might just even look at your own comments and go, wait, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Let me try to, and then um, act, uh, let's, let's say, so act, Let, let's talk about that. How, how, would, how would that person then apply act to their marketing? What, what does that mean? Yeah, I think the acting comes down to, there's two ways to go about it. So one is to, if you find yourself really stuck and you know, you're having difficulty moving forward with whatever the marketing process for the business, I would say focus on making it a little easier for yourself. Um, you know, so what could make the, what could make it a little more pleasant for you if you really don't like marketing and it's super simple things like music or, or, you know, planning a little treat for yourself when you've accomplished your next task. So that's one way to go about it. But if you know what you need to do and what's actually stopping you is sort of the fear, that's when I would come back to that doing uncomfortable things. Um, so challenge yourself to take that one uncomfortable step, um, whether it's starting a Facebook page, that was one for me, or, you know, um, figuring or making out- making a video what, or something like that. Making a video, absolutely. Yeah. That one thing, yes. Yeah. Just find one thing that's, that you find uncomfortable. If you can achieve that one thing, then you've sort of earned the confidence and, and the ability to tell yourself, well, I managed that thing, which I thought would be really hard, so I can do the next step. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I also I also have to say, you know, so much of marketing still is not, I, I have to really, you know, it's, it's not easy for me either. And, um, you know, sometimes people say, well, George, you know, you've been doing this for so long. It's, well, no, like every time I write, I'm still challenged by it. I'm still not feeling inspired by it. Every time I make a video, <laughs> by the time I press go live or record, I, I'm just going to say, oh, I'm just going to, I know kind of what I want to say, but I'm not comfortable yet until a few minutes into the video. <laughs> so no, it is, it is a very important step. Um, so D, decide, how, how do we apply that to this process now? Sure, I'll get to that. That's so interesting to hear you say though, like having done that for so many years and still yeah. finding it hard, that's, that's great that you said that. Um, and decide, yeah, well, this is instead of having the commitment. And uh, for this, I'll borrow an idea from Alexander Franzen, who I know that you, yes. whose work you also enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, so she talked about on a little post-it note or just writing down three reasons why you're doing the work that you're doing. So when you're doing your work as an entrepreneur or you're, you're marketing your business, go back to why did you start that business? What are you trying to do with it? And three simple bullet points. Uh, for why you're doing that and whenever you falter you can always come back to those and say well this is why I made the decision to start this project and this is why I want to move it forward. Mm, I love it. It's simple but it's powerful um, it's great for us to remember these things. So Roshan if uh, people want to connect with you see your further work um, I'm going to be putting the link to the Facebook your new Facebook business page up mm -hmm. there it's facebook.com slash tiny love letters. I love that. That's like kind of your brand now because you're, you're, you're tiny love letters at, on Instagram as well. Um, right. So tell us a little bit about that. What, what was the kind of genesis of this? Sure. So um, on tiny love letters, I'll be sharing, I already have started sharing essays that I write on Medium um, and they're mm -hmm. all about little lessons that I'm learning on my everyday life. Uh, often lessons that I learn in, in teaching, but also just my personal life. Um, and also the, the next project I'll be moving on to um, is sort of connected to the essays is I'll be using some of the essays and gathering them together in a book um, about so basically this book uses maths analogies because I'm a maths tutor 
Um, and it will be using math concepts like equations and vectors to explain some of these lessons that I'm learning in everyday life. So I'm quite excited about that. That's yeah. coming on. That's so yeah. cool. Have you heard of a book called Emotional Equations? I haven't. No. That might be am I interesting. It's by um, uh, Chip uh, Conley, I think is his name. He, he wrote a book uh, years ago that I really liked called Peak. It's about applying Abraham, uh, the Maslow hierarchy into companies, but he wrote it in such an inspiring and easy to understand way that I was like, yeah. oh, that's a brilliant concept for how to, how to run a company. And now he, and then later he wrote a book on you know, like applying math equations to emotions and how we work oh, through emotions. So <laughs> anyway, uh, but I look forward to reading that. Thank yes, you. Yes, and I look forward to seeing your, your next book. And your, the book that you just published is called The Answers Are Everywhere. Uh, right. And um, I'm proud to have been mentioned in the book. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, the answers everywhere is so cool because you basically kind of look at various large life questions from, you know, from sort of purpose to, to even money and, and work and all that stuff. And then you link to a bunch of resources on, on each topic that you found really helpful, blog articles, podcast episodes, you know, things like the videos. So it's a really kind of a, your, your, your collection of best resources. So I really like that. And um, I'll be linking to that as well. And um, anything else you want to say as we complete this uh, interview? No, that's right. Um, just to talk about that book very briefly. Um, it was, so these are resources that I was gathering over the past few years. And I felt I wanted to have them one, in one place so that when I really needed help on a particular topic, um, I could go straight to it and, and find those resources when I need them. Um, and yeah, and aside from that, I would just like to say thank you. Um, you know, your work has really inspired me. And, and I have to say it really stands out in the sea of other marketing advice I've heard. Uh, and I'm really inspired by it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful to be able to do this. So thank you, Roshan, for what you do. And the, it's just, I mean, hopefully you all can see why I wanted to interview her. I felt like she was such a, Roshan, you're such a, um, you know, you're, you're willing to really dive into life and challenges and uh, know that you have all the resources within you and the answers are everywhere. <laughs> so, so thank you. Thank you so much for your work. And um, I, if anyone has any questions or comments, uh, put it below and I'll make sure Roshan sees it. So thanks, Roshan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.